<laughs> Welcome to episode 100. 100. Yes, of Beer with Strangers. I'm your host, Tony Russo, half in the screen. And I'm joined this week as I'm joined each week by my co host, Doug Griffith. And the weather report today is rainy, overcast, but not too bad, at least at this point. It was heavy rain this morning, but now it's just overcast and mm, cool, I guess, 70. Yeah, it's, so it's cool for this time of year. It's clearing out all of the. Um, all the bad weather for the good weather for the beer festival this Saturday, weekend. Yeah. Right. We didn't need rain. It, it was getting very dry. It was. So we're going to bring you up to date. If you haven't seen this before, if you haven't seen us before, um, we do a podcast every week. It's called Beer with Strangers. It's uh, available on iTunes. And um, we've been doing this. This is our 100th episode. And we're switching over to try this Google, not Google Live. Um, Facebook. Facebook Live. Because none of you are watching on Google and we're starting to take it personally. <laughs> So you can still find us if you're if you're one of the people who does watch us on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube videos are still up and good, and we'll still upload it to YouTube, and you can still subscribe to the audio version. We're just trying this out to see how it works, and so far so good. We're getting a little used to the to the small Try screen. Trying new things. We're, we're, it's it's been a hundred. So we've been doing this more than two years. So very cool. Um, and one of the other things we do, the main thing we do, is we talk about beer and homebrew news. And this is a great week to talk about it because you just got back from the homebrew con. So what was that? It was a homebrewers conference was in Baltimore this year, uh, ran Thursday through Saturday, and I can report that I drank my share of beer <laughs> all day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And right. actually, we still we started Wednesday afternoon. They had a industry get together, and then we went out to another place for a beer with our nephew and continue through the weekend. Now, um, is, are there, there's, uh, there's competitions. Did you try the different ones that were, that were we, being? I did not get to taste any. They came out late um, Saturday evening. Um, we went out to dinner to one of the local beer restaurants and they brought those, um, what was remaining of the uh, beers to, that were tasted and uh, evaluated, came out 10 o'clock, um, um, Saturday evening. So wow. I wasn't there. No, you were done by that. Yeah, I was done by that time. But, and, uh, but you didn't have, there were no, heard that there were no names on anything, and that's how they have to do it. So there's no, it's impartial judging. Right. So you didn't know, there was lots and lots of bottles of beer, but there was nothing on them to tell you what kind of beer you were drinking. Just numbers. It's like it's, a double blind. Yeah, you open it up and. And, and just surprise. Yeah. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe style you don't like. That's great. Did you? Um, and, and so you now you guys you have the homebrew shop here, but you didn't you didn't go up like you we didn't, didn't bring participate stuff. Participate as a vendor this year. We did four years ago when it was in uh, Philadelphia, but we felt we got minimal feedback, minimal business because of that, and it was somewhat of a not a, say it's a hassle, but you got to have your booth manned during the time people are going to be in the expo. So it's much more relaxed with us not having to be there to man a booth. Right. So we had a good time. We could go to different seminars. Last time we were kind of restricted to what seminars we could go to because we always had something to boot. Right. And now, and so what, what kind of cutting edge? Did you see anything cutting edge? Any? I don't say really cutting edge, but we went to some of the what they call the industry things that are just for the home brew shops, but. Um, they were generally the first two seminars in the morning and then later on in the afternoon you had seminars on different beer styles. Um, there's one um, dealt with uh, what creates foam. Um, almost any topic you can think of um, creating sour beers, um, helping to improve your taste and talking about the necessary for evaluation of tasting for evaluating beers, um, and on and on and on. Yeah. There's plenty of things. There's three full days of conferences, ran usually three in the morning and three in the afternoon. So you had to pick and choose, and they had actually more than that in the afternoon. And, maybe, and there may have been three to five running at any one time. So you had, you had to make right. the best use of Some of them time. were repeated, but not everything was repeated. So, but. Um, even during that period of time, they have what they call a social club in the expo area, um, local homebrew clubs, and 
say local, it could be anywhere across the country that right. just they come, but most of them are local to driving distance of Baltimore. Because there's a lot of beer to bring. There's a lot of beer to bring. <laughs> Not only do they bring beer for social club, but they bring beer for the um, evening where all the uh, homebrew clubs get together. And now uh, the the folks from Dell were there, the Del Marva United. Yes, we serve beer, um, help participate with that set up, and serve beer through the uh, club night, which was Friday night. Ran seven thirty to eleven thirty. Got plenty of time. Wow! Right there. And there were eighty. Well, there were supposed to be eighty clubs. I saw two or three spots that they didn't get set up. But almost every club had at least four beers, and there were eighty clubs, and some beers had six to eight. On tap, wow. so you had lots of choices of beers, and so and so. How do you, do you choose at random? You just the first the first ten you see. How does that work? Uh, sometimes, well, we went and tasted all the ones from beer from the uh, Wallace Island guys. So right. you go taste generally first the ones that either you've heard somebody said really outstanding or people you know, and then you just randomly pick. Right, wherever you want. And so, how was the Wallace Island beer? Did you enjoy it? Good, yeah. I had some. They have some good stuff. So yes, I went and enjoyed two or three of theirs. They're getting ready to put a rocket up there. At yes, so here. <laughs> In fact, I asked them, "Where's your rocket?" They said, "It's already gone." It's already on the launching <laughs> pad. Yeah, uh, that's very cool. The um... but just the, to tell you the availability of beers. Uh, beers were served in some seminars. Some of the. Um, uh, presenters made their own beer. Some of them was made for a specific reason for them. Um, there was a social club that we just talked about. It was open from 12 to 5. There was, um, that was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday it was open, so you could go different clubs set up at different times. Right. Um, Pro Brewer Night, they had, I think it was 60 different breweries that gave wow. samples. That was in the main or in the beer hall um, so that was Thursday night Saturday night or Friday night was the club night which I already explained right Thursday or Friday during the day you still had beers during the seminars beers during the social club time which was 12 to 5 and then you could still go out and have something somewhere else if you could wow <laughs> you could still get there but there was Pratt Street Brew House, which was right across the street. Yeah, that's a great place. Um, that was the closest place um, that you didn't have to drive to. So. And now, um, the other two things I want to talk about is you said the governor showed up and that Sam Gave governor, the... Uh... And, yes. Governor Hogan from Maryland showed up and gave uh, just a talk saying thanks for coming and appreciated, you know, everything everybody had done and enjoy the beer. Right, but you were talking about the, the law that changed? Well, that's... There had been a law that changed, and I think there's another one coming from what you described, but he said that they had passed a law in Maryland so that they could, the National, or the Homebrew, American Homebrew Association, could provide, have beer and provide beer to anybody who wanted to taste it at this event. You get two ounces of beer legally. Uh -huh. and now you said there's another one coming. Oh, uh, to make it more. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you meant two more ounces. No, because we they, can't... They, they were, whatever law they passed, they were allowed to serve two ounces of home donated, beer. well, home beer, home brew or commercial beer, anything that had been donated for this event that could be tasted two ounces at a time. Well, that's interesting because we, we uh, the, the law currently that we're operating under for this beer festival, which is Saturday, please come out and say hello, is... Uh, is there's a maximum, there's a three ounce, it's a three ounce pour, and that's that's kind of the maximum, instead of just being able to have, like in Worcester County, if you want to if you want to be able to have a full pint, you can have a full pint. You know, it doesn't make sense to go to a beer festival really and get full for pints, that. because, you yeah, you're gonna get, yeah, you're gonna get it's hammered, and you're, good. And you're yeah. gonna, the thing about craft beer is too, you're gonna get full before, you know, like, you're gonna get fuller than you are gonna get drunk, and you, know, you won't be able to taste all the beers anyway. I know Saturday or the uh, club night. I had to really pace myself because you couldn't drink too fast because you were going to be there four hours, and we had a, had both help with the setup and the teardown, so we had to be yeah. somewhat coherent, at, and, at least functional. Yeah. Well, it's funny. One of the first stories that we'll talk about from the uh, blog, and if you'd like to 
you'd like to follow along with the stories, we are um, we post we post all the stories that we're going to discuss on shortcraftbeer.com each week. It usually comes out. It's supposed to come out Tuesday night. Often it comes out Thursday morning. Sometimes <laughs> I make it for Wednesday night. Uh, but one of the one of the things that we were going to talk about is uh, there's a new beer glass that we'll talk about in a second. But I got a I got a kick out of at the bottom of the beer glass article. There was an ad, and there was this, you know, uh, barely dressed young woman holding two pitches of beer. And my, my first thought, because I'm a thousand years old, is I'm like, if I drank that much beer, I would just be full and fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking about the beer glass, I've got a good description of what they described that as on the, 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 their site. So, so uh, the, are the, the, the folks at Coors, not Coors, Molson, I don't, I don't think, is Molson still Coors, or are they not Coors anymore? Was Molson ever Coors? Yes, I think so. But I think they had a divestor. They're talking about divesting because of the InBev. Right. It's, I, I, it's, it's really it's complex. A, it's a moving target at this point. <laughs> the point is, in addition to making the beer that they make, they have also have a, a glass company that's invented a new glass. And uh, we were... Oh, we were oh, I want to give this description. Okay. Now, and this they, is have, a, they have a, an official video that says, for the high-tech glassware... Or the high-tech glassware... Oh, this is top of the video. The official video for the high-tech glassware narrates in a fancy British accent that the toughened glass receptacle features a custom liquid emancipation point, allowing the beer to flow in a hexal spiral through a fluid channel, thereby bringing the beer to terminal smoothness, creating a beer vortex. This <laughs> describes as the beer flowing out of a tap down this channel, which goes around a circle. Right, and fills up from the bottom. Yes. It, doesn't, it doesn't splatter. Um, you can see the video on the site, but uh, I can explain it to you. There's, a, there's like a groove dug yeah. around the... And the idea is that at a bar, you, when you put the glass under the tap, you pour from the tap directly into this channel. And the object of the game is, I guess, to produce a superior head on the beer and... Uh, one of the things that's always weird, though, I always feel kind of funny about it, is when people like feel like they have to top my beer off like it's a like it's a Coors Light like they want like no head on the beer so that they give me. Well, you know, like, if you go to um, Europe, Germany specifically, they have glasses and the glasses are marked where the full mark is, and they actually leave plenty head on top. Yeah, head space for the head. Now you get a pint here most places. There, the pint glasses are sixteen ounces, and if you get head on that beer. You're not getting. You're not getting a pint. You're getting 15, maybe 14 ounces. But I like the way the Germans do it. You know, you're getting your money's worth. You right. get that head on the beer, and if the beer's poured correctly with a head on it, you should have some space at the top. For that. Right. Yeah, and and for you get your money's worth. And so I wonder. I wonder if these. That the, what I'm wondering is if whether these glasses are going to be like 20 ounce glasses because. Yeah, it didn't, I don't know. It doesn't if maybe say, maybe you, know. you fill it to the end of the channel. Right, and then above the channel is it's all head, head right. and it's this thing. It's the same sixty. But anyway, look at look at. I would try it if if if, if I had the opportunity yeah. to, to to test it out. Um, I don't know who it's for, but I would try it for sure. Yeah. On that note, there was a um, back at the homebrew con. There was a conference or a seminar on beer glass design does make a difference. Certain styles. Are generally served in certain glasses, and there is a reason for that because they taste or smell better in that glass. Right, and so. and that's what like with the with the rise of the bigger of the bigger uh, beers, the the snifters became more right. popular right. for beer. Um, I, I, I did about well, like, ten years ago. Um, Sam Adams built a glass. Yeah, with the bubble in the middle. Yeah, it had that uh, laser cut circle, so it would always have bubbles coming up. Right. So. But, so yeah, glass technology. What I wanted to mention was speaking of glasses, I didn't, I don't have a proper Pilsner glass, um, but I did get to try the Evo Pilsner, uh -huh. and it was very, very good. It's it's one oh, of those okay. it's one of those very beer flavored beer. That's the second one I've had. I had the Lager at Blue Earl, and now I had the Pilsner from from Evo, and I like I like this trend of just making beer that's just it's a traditional style. Very traditional, Pilsner, yeah. very very traditional, very very to style, and very very drinkable. I I, I kill. Sometimes my... those are harder to make than the regular 
what we call regular beers now, the IPAs. Because there's no give. Right. Yeah, there's no, so there's no give in the flavor. Like, right. so if it's supposed to have a bunch of different flavors and one of them isn't just right or as much as you want or as little as you want, it doesn't matter because the rest of the flavors make up for it. But if all you're tasting Filters is... Filters are supposed to be light, crisp, and lightly hopped. Yeah. But, but it's amazing, the lightly hopped is lightly hopped and compared to what IPAs are, but generally they do have a fair amount of hop. Oh yeah, no, there was, it was, it yeah. was nice and it was nice and crisp and mm -hmm. and and plenty bitter. And I, I got a growler of it, and that growler did not see dinner. I'm like, <laughs> you know, we were having Mexican food for dinner. I'm like, well, this this growler's not going to make it to dinner, so I'm sorry because uh, my wife had it and she she enjoyed it as well. And I'm like, okay, well, it looks like we'll just drink this, and then we'll have water or something with dinner. We didn't want to wait. Um, so next up in the news, um, we wanted to talk about uh, 9,000 craft, uh, craft breweries. So uh, last week, we, we've, had, we've had, and also we've had a week off. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. We had a week off because we were, because uh, Doug was away. We and were I was away. away. We were away from drinking beer. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jim Koch from, uh, from Sam Adams was talking about the size of the craft beer industry. And one of the things that he said in the in the article in the interview that we're that we're referencing is that he, he thought it could get to nine thousand breweries. That's amazing. Would we're be halfway the, there. Yeah, would so. be the uh, would be the would be the saturation yeah. point. Um, but I see that as there's going to be less breweries or brew pubs that are doing wide distribution. Yeah, I, I agree because there's not going to be shelf space to begin with. But if you make good beer, you got people coming. You don't need it. Right. Yeah, I, there there will never be nine thousand national brands. No. That's for sure. You know, and there won't be nine thousand Sam Adams. But there could be nine thousand third waves, and I'd be right. I'd be fine with yeah. that. Um, and that's one of the things that I mentioned in the in the blog post is that I mean here we have tw there are twenty one on the peninsula, yeah. twenty two on the peninsula, something like that. But here, like between my office and my house, there are five. <laughs> um, there's Third Wave, there's Rubber Soul, there's Evolution, there's Tall Burley, Tales. oh, there's Tall Tales, there's Burley, there's um, Ocean City, Asa Woman, and Baxter. There are eight. Yeah. There are eight breweries between my, my house and office. Oh, and one thing I note on that different breweries, um, Dogfish, right, the um, Pro Brewery, oh, right. uh, Dogfish Poured, Burley Oak Poured, and Evolution Poured. That's so, great. Yeah, they, so, and the, what did Sam have to say while we're talking about that um, about about how the homebrew community works for craft beer? Um, just that he feels that everybody's you know shares in the um, the camaraderie. Uh, they support the um, craft beer business. Almost every um, homebrewer tries a lot of the craft beer, so right. they both go hand in hand. Yeah, and, then and a lot of the, in fact, some of the seminars this time were advancing from homebrew to professional brewer. So, well, and one of the other things that I was thinking about when I was listening to the podcast from two weeks ago, we were talking about how uh, some of the um, breweries make their uh, make their beer available for homebrew, make their recipes available right. for homebrew. And the and the reason is that homebrewers are going to go to breweries. They're not going to they're not going to stay home and just make their own beer. They're going to yeah. go out and they're going to try the beer at the brewery so it's not as if there's any kind of competition between them. Yeah, in fact, we've got uh, some of the beers. We've always had some of the dogfish beers. Now we're right. working with Finn City to have some of theirs available. So, and, yeah, um, and we've got the uh, we've always had for quite a while the um, uh, Dawn Patrol from Third Wave. Which, and that started here, right? That started went here, here yeah, Third Wave. Jerry, who is now the, one of the breweries at Third Wave, started here with us and made that and went there and topped glory and Third Wave glory into um, brewing that beer there. So it's, and it's, it's, it's successful it, both places. It's also really, yeah, it's very, very popular yeah. there. I mean, it's one of my wife's favorites, but I never fail to mention because I'm obnoxious when somebody comes in and they're like, I love this Dawn Patrol. I'm like, well, you know, that's... A homebrew recipe. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so nine thousand is not is not an irreconcilable number, but nine thousand still an amazing number. It, it is. It's and and what's exciting about that, and this will go in kind of with our next story, is that as people are making better beer choices or different better beer choices, you know that those, that those dollars are going to come from somewhere, and I think increasingly they are coming from uh, from the big beer. 
people are, I think people are buying less Budweiser. Yeah. We talked about that yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but what was interesting was we, I, I read a, a stock pick uh, article, beer stocks are awesome, where they, where, they were, where they said that since beer is a commodity, you should really look at buying InBev um, or Miller in anticipation of the, uh, of the upcoming um, merger. merger. But I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a professional stock yeah, picker. Yeah, but I'm not either. It, but feels, it feels like if, if... But long term, I don't think... I just The numbers don't seem to be going up for the big guys. Right. They, or so up for the little guys. They have to acquire so. to, to stay alive. And what it makes me think of is like the airline business. You know, where eventually you've got all of these airlines... Where, I don't know if you recall, but airlines were, were merging and merging and merging just to be able to, to share costs. And, um, and with beer, that doesn't necessarily work as well because you're not going to be able to, to maintain the quality of a, beer, of a brewery that you buy and also cut costs. And have the variety that you had to begin with. And have the variety. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy, but I would go ahead and invest in that company we were talking about uh, last week that, uh, you know, uh, the investment firms that are buying up multiple craft breweries or investing in them, for, investing in for them cash for the uh, for the return, yeah. because that's that's probably that's probably where it is. If you if you want to put your money in in the beer and you don't want to drink it, which is what I recommend, um, then you uh, <laughs> then, then another one to invest in. There's uh, Mitch Steele from Stone. Yes, just announced that he's leaving Stone and opening his own brewery. Now he's not said any more details about that yet. Right, and but that's that would be one I think you could invest in because he's done very good for Stone Brewery. Right, and this is this is one of the one of the old older older timeier. He's been there twenty years. Was yeah, it twenty years? I think so. So he's been with Stone, if not from the beginning, from pretty early on. Yeah, he worked for Budweiser for a while. Right, right. and so he ended up at Stone for most of their expansions. And one of the things, you know, a, a lot of times people will, will poo-poo Budweiser because of the of the quality of the beer, but one of the things that nobody ever complains about is the consistency. That's a it's consistent... It's always the same. It's always the same beer, and so you feel like... Good or bad, whether you like it or not, but it's, it's always gonna the same. It's going to taste the same. Yeah. So you feel like what, what they've learned, what, what you learn at Budweiser is how to make the same beer every time. And certainly and stones. Consistency is very difficult for the craft brewer, especially when they first start out. So this is one thing they try to strive, because there's nothing worse to a small brewery put out a beer that everybody's expecting to be a certain taste. And it's, and it's, and it's a lot different. Yeah. And, and this is, it's not, it's not as critical when there's just one, uh, like when there's, when there's just, when you put the beer out once a year, but if you're yeah. putting it out every week, it should probably taste the same on Friday as it does on Monday, yeah. or not so different that you're like, oh wow, I I thought I liked this beer, but I don't. If you get your name a beer, it needs to be taste the same. Right. Every 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 time you try it, it needs to be the same beer. Uh, but it'll be really interesting, and we'll be following that story as it develops. Um, this is the glass of beer. This is the brewmaster. These are the stocks. How about the uh, old beer? And this is the old beer. So. We did a story earlier this year about a different set of beer that was born, that was that was found in what was it Iceland or, yeah, or it was. And but anyway, this this one comes from Australia. Two hundred twenty year old beer that was in a shipwreck that went down two hundred twenty years ago, and they've taken some of the bottles. And the way I read it is, it they found these back in the late nineteen nineties, right, and were put aside in some storage area, and then one of the archaeologists started thinking about, what are the same this stuff live? And he finally had very skeptical results when he talked to different people, because nobody thought anything over a decade for yeah. these was, was active, still viable. This is 22 decades old. Right. Um, well, but they did find some, some Bretomyces and some um, Saccharomyces, uh, Still alive, um, and and yeast. Tell me, yeast doesn't always die so much as go dormant, right? That's the thing. Yeah, but how that, long is dormant going to last? That's oh the yeah. Thing. Um, even when you get um, traditionally, they put things on slants, which is a little bit of 
um, growing me an agar, and then they put them away, and uh -huh. periodically they have to bring them out and revive them and put them away again. But, right. Um, this has been put away for 220 years. <laughs> well, it's, it's very interesting, and one of the things that I said, well, that I mentioned about it in the blog is what I would like to see is I would like to see them put that yeast out. I'm, not, I'm less interested in the beer than I am in the yeast. Just, but they've, they've uh, made a pale ale. Right. Um, An English, yeah, English style. style. Yeah. So, and those, are, those, aren't, those, are, those, are, those aren't interesting beers, but I don't mean that as like a criticism. They're it's just, just going to be, be nice to see what it tastes like. Right, what, to, to see what kind of different things. than what today's. Right. It'd be nice to be able to have a side by side comparison. This is from two hundred and twenty years ago and this is from one of the today's Right, same recipe, yeast. Yeah. same yeast, yeah. but a modern yeast versus a two hundred right. year old yeast. It would, it would be fascinating to see and uh, and hopefully we will see it before too long. Um, and last but not least Oh, that's it. The uh, only other things we have to talk about is the upcoming beer festival. I wanted to leave a couple minutes for that. Let's see if I did. I did. That's great. So um, this this weekend, Saturday. Saturday. There, the beer festival is in Salisbury. Now, um, I just want to update everybody because it's actually gone from scary to very, very good. There's going to be um, all the brewers. Are, all the brewers are going to make it, which is cool. Um, even Dogfish, which there was some there was some concern about whether or not they'd come from their distributor. They, they're like, oh, they have Firefly. They're not coming. But Matt Funk, yay for Matt Funk. He came through and he's like, no, I'm not coming. <laughs> but somebody will be there. So they're sending beer. And, and also, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, they're sending the 90-minute IPA, not the 60-minute oh, IPA. Great. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's kind of, that's not common for them to pour at a, uh, right. at a, at a beer festival. So, so thanks to Dogfish for sending that along. And you should come out and try that. They're also um, serving up the Festina Pesci, Pesci, Pesce, which uh, which is this year being released. You know, they're they're releasing it next week. They're releasing it, I think, Friday at the brewery, and then serving it Saturday. Oh, that's at great. The, yeah, at the at the, the festival, release. right? Yeah. And uh, other other fun ones are Fin City has a has a uh, has a new beer that's coming out and. They haven't described it. They just named it. It's oh. called the Bimini Twist, which is the name of a knot. Um, but that's all we know about the beer. That is actually also being released at the Globe on Friday and then being poured at the festival on Saturday. You can't get much fresher than yeah, the, no, two, two new ones. Two, two brand new mm. beers. And uh, also our friends at Rubber Soul will be pouring their Berry Rye, which is the only beer that's named after Salisbury. Um, I've had it. It's very good. And I don't recall the other beer. He said, actually, if you check right, right below this, you might see the post that they made. They posted to our Facebook page that the beers that they, that's how they were going to make their announcement. Um, and all the beers are, are listed on the website and except for three and which I'll, I'll list two of them actually this afternoon, but all the beers are listed on the website. Um, I confirmed with a bunch of artists. So there's going to be like this plain air festival and the artists are going to be there, um, painting there. So they'll be doing a live oh, painting wow. event. And then afterwards there's a party at Hopper's, um, the, oh, uh, Soul Beer Boulevard. Yeah. The, the top, that's the top ha tap house down by, mm -hmm. uh, Salisbury University, where they have all the beers from, well, they have some beers from all the breweries, um, and when the, they're going to be selling the art that they paint in the morning there in the evening, so uh, people will be painting, you know, just the different festival scenes, or maybe the different river scenes, and so that, that should be a lot of fun, and also Hoppers is doing a special for people who come by. So fresh beer and fresh paint. Fresh beer and fresh paint, yes. <laughs> And, uh, and also there's going to be people selling, you know, selling stuff. It's a street fair. So there are going to be people selling whatever they make, you know, uh, different. And you'll see us there. Doug will be there with sodas. Sodas to drink. Yep. Have you, have you chosen the sodas yet? No, not yet. I got to make that tomorrow. <laughs> and now when you, you, you make them all the way in advance, you, do you put the, do you do a mix or do you put yep. it right in the. We put it right in the keg. Right mix keg. it up and put it in the keg. Um, sweeten it and then we'll carbonate it uh, Saturday morning. Very cool. And I think that that'll be very popular because I think people will be, you know, happy to have a little bit of, a little bit of something break, to, yeah. to break the monotony. And also, for those of you who have been asking, and there are like eight or ten of you that have been asking, my book will be available. Are you bringing the book? You know? I, yeah, I guess we will. If, they, if, they, if, if you want one of my books, go see Doug. And if he doesn't have one, I have some in my car. I'll sell you out of the back of my some. trunk. Uh, but uh, we're, we're, we're open to sell a couple books. I'll sign them. Um, I'll personalize and we'll be taking pictures and all those things at the Salisbury Beer Festival 
Um, and it's called the Shorecraft Beer Fest and Riverwalk Celebration. Um, the town is really excited. They've participated in a big way. The library is going to be there. There's going to be face painting for kids. The dogs are going to be there. It's going to be a big oh, deal. Good. Sounds great. And it's supposed to be sunny. Yes, and that's the other. That's the other thing. Not the, too warm. So. The rain has stopped, yeah. and it just rained enough to take the edge off the heat. So we're really looking forward to seeing you out there. Come and say hello. Uh, at the very least, you can still get tickets for a discount um, if you go to shorecraftbeerfest.com. And the coupon code you can enter is SAVE5, S-A-V-E, and the number 5. How long does that last now? That, that'll be until tomorrow night. Now, it's taken down off the site, but I know a guy. So um, <laughs> so it, the advertisements have stopped, but I've left, the, I've left that, uh, that so SAVE5. You, you save 5 bucks. Right, and if you buy the tickets one at a time, again, I said this to a couple people, um, the way that the site works, you can only take an amount off per sale, so you can't really take a percentage uh -huh. off because we have a bunch of different prices. So if you want to get $5 off of every ticket, make multiple purchases. So if you want two tickets, buy it twice and get $5 so off and save, and save 10. You want 10 tickets, save 50. So yeah, the more tickets you buy, the yeah. more money you <laughs> save. <laughs> um, and what do we got coming up here? Nothing at the moment. Um, We've got a class next Tuesday for winemaking in Lewis, Tuesday evening. So if you uh, want to learn more about making wine, call Lewis or call here, make a reservation. Uh, other than that, that's all we have besides our um, wheat beer contest coming up next month. So. Yep, and that's, that, that'll, be, that'll be a party in July to, yes. to celebrate that. So get your beers made and get them in for, you know, for tasting. And uh, as always, you can find us on uh, extremebrewing.com, e x t r e m e b r e w i n g dot com, or e x t r e m e b r e w i n g dot com. Click on everything else, and you can find the link to the podcast where you can subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's my name backwards, o s s u r y n o t dot com. Sometimes I'm very mean, but I don't hate you. <laughs> and uh, that'll do it. So until next week. And I have oh. good reports that last week, and I plan to do it on Saturday. I'm going to drink what I like and be happy. There you go. All right. Thanks, folks.